you guys know, this season we're visiting all 20 Premier League stadiums. And as of today, we've only got two left to visit. Brighton's Amex and Luton's Kenilworth Road. Now, when we get the chance, we will tick those off that list. But despite coming to Old Trafford numerous times on match day, you guys have requested me to come here for a tour. So today, this is going to be a bit of a three-part video. In this video, we're going to take a look around the streets around Old Trafford. I'm currently on St. Matt Busby Way on the way in to the Theatre of Dreams. We're also going to look around the outside of Old Trafford itself. There is obviously talk of a new stadium, so Jim has kind of opened up our minds as to what can be done here at Manchester United. So in part one, as of right now, let's have a little look around the streets around Old Trafford. In part two, we're going to be doing the stadium tour inside the ground as well as taking a look at the museum, the mega store and sampling some of the delightful food at the Red Cafe. And in the final part, we're going to head over to the car park behind the Stretford end, take a look at where a new Trafford could possibly fit, where it could go. So, as I said, right now we're on some at Busby Way. This is a massive contrast to Saturday. We were here for the Fulham game. Unfortunately, we would head down some at Busby Way and it would be buzzing. But what I'm going to do, we're going to start off around here. You've got the Manchester United Foundation behind us. So we're going to head down that street there. I'm not even sure it's the, na the name of the street. So this is a thing on match day. You've got your, your set routine, haven't you? You might start up there at Lumakara's Fish and Chip Shop, wander down to the ground and you kind of don't really pay attention unless you are... A local lad which guessing from my accent you guys are gonna give me some stick for not being from Manchester this is the one she's waiting for. so guys we're currently on railway road because as you know there's a railway which runs behind where I am now runs parallel to the Sir Bobby Charlton stand the former South stand of Manchester United's Old Trafford. Let's wander down Railway Road. Now, this side of the stadium isn't always kind of pictured, again, partly because of the, the railway, but it's also probably the most ugliest of sides. Now, Old Trafford obviously comes under a lot of criticism for the way it is, the fact that it's apparently falling down. I don't think it's that bad, but we're gonna give an honest review today. Behind me, a lovely mural on the wall, Showing some love to the Manchester United women's team. Let's keep heading down Railway Road. And we're now going to take a sharp turn up Partridge Street. Now, Partridge Street, Railway Road, all these kind of streets are kind of your typical old school terraced housing, semi-detached housing you'd find in and around a football ground, an old school football stadium. Remember, Old Trafford has been here, has been open since 1910. So as a film in this, it's 114 years old, which may be a reason why they choose to build a whole new stadium rather than renovate Old Trafford itself. But when you kind of walk amongst these sort of streets, these are the streets that often aren't pictured or aren't thought of when you think of Manchester United. You think of a global brand, people traveling from all over the world to watch Man United play football. But it's no less at the heart of the community here in this part of Manchester than some of the other clubs we visit. Just look at the houses. If it wasn't Old Trafford rearing its head in the distance and we were walking through these houses, we would celebrate this. We would celebrate the fact that the ground is in the heart of the community. So it must be somewhat frustrating for fans who live locally. I'm sure they get access to tickets. Maybe they don't, a little easier than we do. But you know, when people fly over the world to watch United and the local people can't necessarily get to games because tickets are hot property. It must be a bit frustrating when travelers like me <laughs> wander their streets. So I'm coming up this way now, guys, because this is where you probably will go on match day if you're coming from this side. We're going to approach now the main road, which has the Lumakari Fish and Chip Shop, a couple of bars and stuff. You've got this souvenir shop as well behind me, which for those of you who love retro kits and memorabilia, 
it's a really good shop. Um, we have been there on match day and they were selling retro shirts, authentic retro shirts for a really good price, like 150 quid, which, which sounds a lot of money, but when you compare it to classic football shirts, the Red Star Sports Souvenir shop behind me had some bargains in there. So you've got the Red Star Sports Souvenirs, you've got Lumacara's Fish and Chip Shop, you've got a random subway, uh, like a chicken place, a few other food places. We'll wander over there in a moment. Behind me over here, you've got the Bishop Blaze, which is basically a weather spoon. Um, it's really weird seeing it like this because it's normally absolutely heaven with United fans outside on match day. I think it is open. Yeah, so the weather spoons behind me is open. Uh, the guy in the car park said, Christ, you're early for the tour. I didn't want to tell him I was filming because I was there obviously on Saturday around that area and a couple of security guards came up to me checking I wasn't a terrorist because apparently I was acting really suspicious. <laughs> I thought my camera might be a bomb. Obviously it wasn't. But if you look through those doors in the Wetherspoons, there's a massive Sir Alex Ferguson picture on display. We're not going to go in there for breakfast because we're off to the Red Cafe. Again, remember United apparently have a one-star food hygiene rating. That's not going to bother me. They could drop my pizza on the floor, mop up the dust and all the crap on the floor with it, and I'd still eat it. I'm not fussy. There is uh, a group of fans who come up on the supporters bus we sometimes use who go to this Tesco behind us. They pop in a cafe there, have a couple of cups of tea and coffee and stuff. They're a little bit older than I am. Um, so that's a nice convenient Tesco for you guys if you are heading up to Old Trafford for maybe the first time. I mean, look, let's walk down this way a little bit. Let's go back towards where we came from because I do find that this side of Old Trafford by the railway doesn't get much love, doesn't get much attention. And obviously there's a reason for that. But we try and celebrate not just the pretty uh, and uh, the more frequently visited parts of football stadiums. We like to get to the nitty gritty, don't we guys? So for you guys, just to get your bearings behind this car park here, which I don't think I'd advise you to try and park at on match day, by the way. I'm not sure. Someone let us know in the comments below. When we park, we park miles at this way. But as, point, as a point of reference, behind here obviously being the old South Stand, what was, I think, the, called the main stand back in the day, because you guys know I love Archibald Leach, the famous Scottish architect. Believe it or not, I've got a, an opportunity to mention Mr. Leach because he was behind designing Old Trafford when it opened back in 1910. Originally, Old Trafford was going to be a 100,000-seater stadium, but funds, money dried up, so they had to scale back. But what is now the Bobby Charlton stand, former South stand, I believe was called the main stand and was the only stand that was covered over. The rest were just open terraces. And, uh, oh my God, look at that glorious shot behind. See, I need to be honest, I need to be neutral. I always say on Royce Football Paradise, we offer a neutral perspective. Let's give a neutral perspective. It does look a bit tired, it does look a bit old, but again, it opened in 1910 and it's quite hard to renovate around that railway. We'll get... Well, let's just talk about the railway now, shall we? So let's go and check out the railway because the railway has proved to be a pain in Old Trafford's ass over the years and probably will be another reason why United build a whole new stadium rather than try and modify and extend it because of that bloody railway. Right, guys, so it has been quite tricky to get close up to the ground. Um, you can basically see what is the Stretford end, where we were on Saturday, the main United kind of supporters, rowdy end. There's no way in here, um, but obviously we're going to actually check that out as well when we look at where United could build a new stadium because essentially they're going to probably have to build one between the railway track and the canal. OK, so rather than going back up Alton Street, I'm going to continue down rail, railway road because we can get a glimpse of that railway track just to the left as we come out of here. But then we can also look at some at Busby Way, some of the houses. I've always had a weird obsession with them. I've always thought I would love to buy a house on some at Busby Way. Ladies and gents, what do they go for? I'm sure they're highly sought after as a United fan. I'm sure it would be an absolute nightmare living there if you're not a football fan. Imagine all the match day traffic, the fact that you can't park your car outside. But if you are a red, it must be fantastic. We all so yeah, we're on the bridge, we're outside Old Trafford, back to where we started. I just wanted to give you a quick glimpse of the railway. So there's the railway line behind us. 
again, it's proved to be a bit of a pain in United's side because of the fact that they can't extend that Sir Bobby, Sir Bobby Charlton stand. You've probably seen Old Trafford from above. Obviously, you've got the tall other three sides, ends. The Stretford ends big, the East stands big, the Sir Alex Ferguson stands massive, the Old North stand. But it's uh, actually my favourite place to sit, despite being in the Stretford end most of the time. My favourite place to sit is in the Sir Bobby Charlton stand. Um, in a safe standing area. That's my favourite place. But more on that later on when we do the tour. So heading back up some Matt Busby Way. I always like this house over here with obviously the tribute to the Busby Babes. You've got some Matt Busby and Bobby Charlton on the poster. The famous European Cup win. On match day, they'll have, I'm pretty sure it's that house, they'll have a stand up selling merch and stuff. So I'm guessing all of these must be United fans. As we make our way back up this way, you've got the bar and off licence over there in the corner. So you can head in there for your chips, your burgers and stuff, but you can also get some points, even though it is absolutely rammed in there normally. So the guys, we're going to head this way now. We're going to head, as I said, round and towards hotel football. Behind me over there, you've got the Trafford. We did pass that again on Saturday. I want to keep going over the same places where we've been. Nice Bobby Charlton mural on the wall. So behind me over there, guys, you've basically got like a retail park, kind of a standard retail park you'd find. You've got Curry's, Costa, Ren Kitchens, Dreams, Food Warehouse, Home Bargains. Behind me over here, you've got a DFS and a KFC in front. So we always, again, I need to treat this like any other exterior stadium tour, tour that we do without any bias um, but we always do big up the fact that you get an old school ground with all the modern facilities close by so it's quite nice that you've got all this stuff basically on the doorstep of Old Trafford because there are an older generation that likes to make a day of it and doesn't just want to get wrecked up on match day. DFS. I always laugh when I pass this KFC because um, me and my mum and my stepdad both of who you've met on the channel, the Wolves fan and the Villa fan. We had a bit of a Barney Rubble, probably my fault, in that KFC. Some bloke was beeping us behind in the joy through and it kicked off big time. By the way, the road we've just walked along, I think, is Chester Road. Now, as we approach whatever road this is called, this is where Paddy Power have just run their campaign. 25% while it's a start. Well, as we mentioned on Saturday, so Jim has taken over a little over 25% of the club. It's more like 27.7. But over on that building, that old warehouse behind me, is the billboard, or was the billboard, where the advert was. So even though we did show, it, show you it on Saturday, let's go and take another look. So yeah, this is the warehouse behind that Paddy Power ran the campaign on. This is Wharf Side Way, the road. Behind me in the distance, you've got the main east, where well, the kind of front that people approach with the shop and stuff, the east stand, um, which is also where we've parked in front. So if you are to come for a stadium tour, museum tour, etc., make sure you park where those guys in the high-vis jackets are in the east car park. Really good parking. I think I'm the only one <laughs> parked up at the moment, nice and early. So I'm not going to get too much of this side of the ground. We are just going to pass Hotel Football. But as you can see behind me, you've got the canal and that tall, thin building is Hotel Football. The car park I've parked in for the tour is behind those trees over there. Now, that's not the car park we're talking about when it comes to United building a new ground. Again, we'll get onto that later on. But um, as you can see, there's so much space in and around Old Trafford that there is plenty of room for a possibility of a new stadium. So we're back to the East Stand, which is obviously in front of where the car park is. Hotel football behind me. We're not going to again go over to the car parks on that side because I'm going to save that for part three when we look at where the New Trafford could be. You've got the canal behind me there. But I am just going to start wandering around the front of the ground. I don't want to get in trouble with security. They seem quite hot on filming at the moment um, with the tour and everything booked. We need to keep them sweet to let her on and then we can push it a little bit more. So let's wander around the front of the East Stand. We're going to check out a bit of that Munich kind of mural under the Sir Bobby Charlton Stand Tunnel. And we might also come over this way near where the canal is 
and have a look at the front of the Sir Alex Ferguson stand. As I said, the Stretford End, that kind of way, we're going to leave to later on in part three. So let's go and have a little look round the outside of Old Trafford. Let's go. literally be here all day just looking at all the artwork around the ground a lot of grounds do it but united have had so many memorable moments over the years that it's just too much to display around old trafford but one thing that is on display is that bloody remington advert i'm not sure how i feel about kobe mainu mason mount and luke shaw with a hairdryer advertising remington which is essentially kind of a, a woman's hairdryer brand a little bit a little bit, not very macho, but you know, this is 2024, so I'll let them off. Right then guys, so behind me over here is where the East Stand will meet the Sir Bobby Charlton Stand. Now, if you are an away fan, this is where you need to be, because this is the away entrance over here in the corner. I did make reference to the fact that I enjoy sitting in the Bobby Charlton Stand, and I sit over there somewhere, fairly close in a safe standing to the away fans. It's a really good atmosphere, especially when you're winning, maybe not when you're losing, like on Saturday. There's various tributes to Munich. You can see um, the tribute there on the wall behind me. Um, you've got the basically names of the players and staff who died on the tragic Munich air disaster. Oh, can't film. Sorry, mate. Right, guys, it was going oh so smoothly until security just stopped me from filming. We got to the Munich kind of tribute, but did we? Because if you'd continued down underneath through the tunnel of the Sir Bobby Charlton stand, you've got a proper Munich tribute down there. But I was told that I'm not allowed to professionally film. I'm, I was flattered that he thought I was professionally filming. I had the microphone and I was doing my thing with a camera. He said, you can kind of get clips and stuff, um, but you need, you need to have permission. I think this is kind of something, I, I do feel that maybe YouTubers have come here in the past trying to get the inside scoop as to Old Trafford being being run down being old and they're trying to pick pick faults in the stadium and being a united fan i wasn't planning on doing that i was trying to give you an honest approach but what i'm going to do now because i don't want to obviously we are going to do the tour and stuff so i don't want to push it too much with security and that i'm going to head over for this video you're going to see me back at football paradise hq and we're going to use some old footage around those parts of the ground and i'm going to narrate over them as of right now, as of filming this, I'm going to head over to the tour. But yeah, we'll finish up at Football Paradise HQ and then obviously go into part two. So I'll see you back at Football Paradise HQ. Right then, guys, here we are in a half-finished Football Paradise HQ. Remember, we're refurbing this. The video on the man cave, the studio, is going to be uploaded on Wednesday and it's going to lead into our very first live stream on Wednesday evening. Time to be confirmed, but part two of this video is coming to you on Tuesday. Reason being, this weekend, we're going to be filming a rather fun video, something a little bit different, and that's coming to the channel on Monday. So everything behind the Stretford End, the car parks and the areas we've not quite been to around that side of Old Trafford, that will be not in part two, that will be in part three, and part three is coming to the channel on Thursday. So if you are new to the channel, make sure you're subscribed. Like this video if you like this video. We've got loads of cool videos coming to the channel. I've got more beyond that video on Thursday. We've got a proper backlog going on. And I'm trying to get back to each and every one of your messages. I hate not responding to messages, but I generally don't really text in everyday life, so I'm not the best at messaging back. That is another reason why I've decided to do a live stream. So get your questions ready for Wednesday evening on the very first Rice Football Paradise live stream. This has been a pleasure, guys. Check out some of the videos to the side of me here. And I'll see you in one of those bloody videos.